And uh, Roy here has just given a very interesting talk about the dangers of 5G. Uh, what are the f dangers of 5G, uh, Roy? Because isn't 5G a good thing? It's going to make our lives so much easier, download things so much quicker. Uh, what's the problem? So, so, so the issue is um, that uh, the, the government's... Uh, relies upon a safety standard which is not fit for purpose. It essentially amounts to the fact that if you can hold a phone to your ear for six minutes and there's no thermal effect, then that's deemed to be safe. But clearly that's not the case. Uh, there are many, many studies in the uh, public domain which show that there are uh, substantial health, adverse health effects through exposure to very low levels of um, non-ionising, non-thermal radiation. And this is the battle that we, uh, we need to win. Um, there are many whistleblowers, uh, ex-military, who, who talk about this. Uh, Captain Jerry Flynn, in, he, in his book, um, The Hidden Dangers of 5G, talks about it ex extensively, uh, and many others. Um, so m my view is, I, 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 although it's an uphill battle, it is um, something that we need to raise awareness of, because uh, it is actually cooking us in our homes. Right, yeah. You've just uh, done a local study or a survey between one place, one locality with lots of 5G towers around and another one without a lot at all. Uh, the readings in the latter are very low, the readings in the former are very high. What were you finding on, on that study? Well, um, th th although there's a, a low densification of masts in the control area, which, which we're talking about, which is Crawley Down, uh, people have to travel out of the area. Uh, and what we find is that many of these masts are located in busy junctions so that you have to pass them either to or from your journey to work or, or whatever. Uh, and so you're getting a, a, a daily dose of five to ten minutes each way of your working, each end of your working day. And the problem with this technology is it's cumulative in nature. So the more you're exposed to it, the more likely you are to experience some of the issues we talk about, uh, I've just talked about in my presentation. Um, and so the raising of awareness is, what is, is one aspect, uh, but equally we need to try to um, come together as communities to try to stop this because it is harming our communities. Uh, th there are studies that have been done recently, the New Hampshire report, for example, that states that, that, that this, none of these masks should be within 500 metres of residential areas, and yet we are surrounded by them in a, an area where I live in Crawley, for example. What do you say, uh, if these uh, 5G masks are harmful, uh, what do you say to someone who would say, why isn't the government doing anything about it? Well, um, as you'll see in my presentation, there's, there's a, this has been identified as a national security risk, uh, and so they will never acknowledge the uh, non-thermal effects. Okay, and what are just a handful, just a couple of mitigating things we can do to protect ourselves until we can get something more permanent sorted out? Well, well, certainly within your own home, uh, there's a lot you can do. You can hardwire your house, hardwire the router, hardwire all of your devices when you use them. If ever you're using mo mobile data or Wi-Fi, you, you're exposing yourself to pretty high levels of RF radiation. So that would be my um, uh, initial advice. Obviously, when you're outside, um, that, that's a more difficult thing because what we're finding in some of these areas where there's a high densification of masts is that we're getting background regions of anywhere between 4 and 8 milliwatts per square metre, which is extremely high. Um, although we, we've become accustomed to seeing these types of numbers, they are harmful and they are high. Okay, Roy, it seems like it's a cause for concern. Thank you very much for your time.